from the Tower of Yaramir, we follow the outline of the ramparts, the street, which the Volga is actually named after this. And here the hotels come thick and fast. Geography dictates that unless you came by sea, you most likely would enter the city from the west. And since the Western Gate was in this area, this is also where the majority of guests arrived. And this again facilitated that this is where you had the higher concentration of hotels. With the arrival of the railway, the hotels moved further west, and we will return to that later. The first hotel we encountered is Kofalaik, designed by Roger Müller. Today it includes the neighboring Hotel Hafnia. The building of that is too young because it was reconstructed after a fire, but the hotel as such is as old as Kofalaik. When you have a west gate, you also have a west street. And this was where you had the really, really high concentration of inns back from medieval times and right up until 1900. The hotels have all moved out and left only the pubs, the bars, and the nightclubs. One of the old hotels in the street was Three Hearts. The building is actually younger than the hotel because it burned. The hotel has been here since the beginning of the 17th century, and it was here that you had the home of Dina Weinhofers. Her importance is linked to the Chancellor Kofitz Ulfeldt. He was married to a morganatic daughter of Christian IV and embezzled the king in big fashion, and it was Dina who exposed him. She was convicted of perjury because she insisted that her child was the daughter of Ulfeld, something that was adamantly not true because the child was born before she even met Ulfeld. And for that she was executed in front of a castle. But the numbers were up for the, for the Chancellor and he had to flee the country. In front of the West Street we would have the Western Gate and today this place is now occupied by the town hall square. The town hall itself is inspired by the town hall of Siena and just like any medieval North Italian city with words and saw, this meant that there was a number of towers around the square. The oldest of the towers is this one on Hotel Metropole designed by Philip Schmidt, and it's actually older than the town hall. And just like Hotel Phoenix, it fell on hard times and was turned into a newspaper, newsroom, and printing room. And when that newspaper went belly up, it was turned into regular offices. But unlike Phoenix, it's not been reintroduced as a hotel. Just across the street, we have this little building. The hotel here never went all the way down to the ground floor. And well, it turned out to be simply too small and was therefore given up as a hotel and turned into offices. In the background, you can see another tower at the square. This one belongs to the neighbor which is very much alive as a hotel. This is the Palace Hotel, designed by Anton Olsen. Built simultaneously with the town hall, the two architects, who were personal enemies, faced each other off several times, well, basically every day. And the architect of the town hall, Martin Muir, designated this building as the backside of horse. A bit harsh, but it's not really an artistic evaluation. It's more a matter of the two architects hating each other with a passion. There's actually one more hotel at the square, but it's too young to be included here. 
let's go up the boulevard to the corner of Georgia Street.